नमस्ते वेलकम टू न्यूक्लियोडेस एंड सोल्यूशंस यूट्यूब चैनल वेर वी डिस्कस अबाउट सोल्यूशंस ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स विच वी एज न्यूक्लियोमेडिसन प्रोफेशनल्स फेस इन आवर डे टू डे लाइफ बट दे आर नॉट टॉट एनी वेयर और वर डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड सो वी ट्राई टू फाइंड द सोल्यूशंस डिस्कस इट हेयर सो दैट एवरी वन फ्रॉम द फैटर्निटी कैन बी बेनिफिटेड ऑन द सेम सीरीज वी हैव डिस्कस सिक्स वीडियोज विच इंक्लूड्स हाउ टू सेटअप हाइड्रोज थेरेपी फैसिलिटी how to do normalization and well counter corrections of g discovery iq pet ct how to handle radiation emergencies and like that there are six videos on the same series today we are going to discuss about nuclear medicine dosimetry since this is a vast and complex topic we will have a series of videos which will include basics of nuclear medicine various methods of dosimetry by mird icrp and radar groups and it and their publications diagnostic radionuclear dosimetry and evolution of phantoms ct dosimetry dosimetry in therapeutic nuclear medicine what are the books available on nuclear medicine dosimetry scientific papers what they say what are the software packages what are the online tools available for the nuclear medicine dosimetry so it will be a detailed discussion we will try to find everything about the dosimetry in this presentation we will try to understand why this can be so important in the future we will be discussing on current clinical practice statements from scientific communities typical arguments for not doing dosimetry recommendations of governing body and enm standard operating procedures for nuclear medicine dosimetry in icrp publication 133 the editor in chief Mr C H Clement said and I quote I thought I understood radiological protection but now I know that I had barely scratched the surface so if he says like this I definitely have a privilege to misunderstand it somewhere please let me know in the comment box if you find anything thank you very much so let's begin we all know theranostics or the future of nuclear medicine there are several papers on this This is a 2019 paper which say theranostics the future of functional imaging. There is another paper theranostics the 21st century bio economy and one health. This is a 2012. There is one more paper which is again of 2015 and says the future of molecular imaging theranostic nanoparticles. So theranostics are going to be future for the nuclear medicine in current clinical practice. the doses for therapeutic radio pharmaceuticals is decided as one size fits all approach means there are certain doses which is given to everybody irrespective of their individual characteristics there are some administrations which are adjusted according to patient body weight there are some more factors which may influence the decision of doses which we will be discussing in the next slide in this fixed dose approach or empirical approach many times patients receive poor quality of therapy with no knowledge of what radiation doses they may have received if we continue to do this a fixed dose approach we will never advance the knowledge of therapeutic nuclear medicine because we don't know how much doses are absorbed these are few more factors based on which the dose can be determined like pathological factors such as extrathyroidal extension aggressive histology lymph node metastasis genetic mutation this is a paper of uh, 2017 which summarizes the factors associated with dose determination of radioactive therapy for differentiated thyroid cancer in the current practice of empirical dose there are fixed doses like 3200 mg of iodin 131 for thyroid remnant ablation 100 to 150 mg for adjunct therapy 100 to 200 mg for the therapy of residual tumor of metastatic disease after surgery 100 mg to 300 mg of iron 131 mibg and that again depends upon the tumor burden and the local legislations in lutetium dota therapies the dose is 150 to 200 mg 2 to 6 cycles and the time interval between cycles is 6 to 16 weeks in radium 2 to 3 therapy for prostate carcinoma the dose is 50 kbq per kg every 4 weeks for a total of 6 cycles there is a concept called maximum tolerable absorbed dose where a dose is given is as high as 
which does not affect much to the non-target tissues. In dose optimization techniques, there are two principles. One is ALARA and the other is AHASA concept. ALARA we know as low as reasonably achievable and AHASA is as high as safely administratable or attainable. ALARA principle works on lesion-based dosimetry and focuses on targeted dose delivery. For example, in thyroid remnants, the target absorbed dose is 300 gray and to the metastatic disease, 80 gray. But in a HASA approach, it is based on the concept on maximal safe prescribed activity which should have greater therapeutic benefit than multiple smaller impact activities which may induce non-lethal changes in the cancer tissue with subsequent cellular repair. For example, the dose limiting factors can be a blood which is a 2 gray or 23 gray to the kidneys. There is a paper published in Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism published in 2011 and studied about iodine-131 activities as high as safely administratable for the treatment of children and adolescents with advanced differentiated thyroid cancer. They studied around 180 children and given 133 courses of iodine-131 thyroid remnant ablation and 250 courses of iodine-131 distant metastatic disease. And they concluded children and adolescents with advanced DTC can be treated with at least 200 MBQ of iodine-131 activities. But for children with extensive pulmonary metastasis, pre-therapeutic dosimetry is needed to determine AHASA. There are a number of studies which advocate about patient individualized therapy planning and say they are more efficient than empirical method of radionuclide therapies. Let's see one by one. There is a study published in Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism published in 2011 with the title Efficacy of Dosimetry versus Empiric Prescribed Activities of Iden-131 for Therapy of Differentiated Thyroid Cancer in which they have studied about 87 patients and followed them for 51 plus minus 35 months for whom 43 were treated with dosimetry based therapy planning and 44 were treated with empirical based therapeutic plans and they concluded higher efficacy for dosimetry based therapy plan with a similar safety profile compared with empiric based therapy plan supports the rationale for employing individually prescribed activity in high risk patients with DTC. There is another study which is published in European Journal of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging published in 2010. The study is radiodine therapy dosimetry in benign thyroid disease and differentiated thyroid cancer and the conclusion is there is increasing evidence that personalized and evidence-based treatments could improve the quality and outcome of radionuclide therapy. There is another paper of 2017 published in Journal of Nuclear Medicine which studies clearly individualized dosimetry for theranostics necessary, nice to have or counterproductive and they have concluded dosimetry not only is nice to have and easily performed after treatment with lutetium or before treatment of differentiated thyroid cancer with radioiodine but also is needed for predicting therapy success and optimizing therapeutic applications of radiopharmaceuticals. They have clearly said it is not only nice to have but it is needed for predicting therapy success and optimizing therapeutic applications of radiopharmaceuticals. In the next study of 2014 published in European Journal of Nuclear Medicine with the title The Evidence Base for the Use of Internal Dosimetry in Clinical Practice of Molecular Radiotherapy in which they have studied 92 papers on dosimetry hence they have tried to search everything from the publications which are based on dosimetry out of that they have found 79 studies which are investigating dosimetry and they found 48 studies there is a correlation in absorbed dose effect and they concluded the evidence strongly employs a correlation between absorbed dose delivered 
and the response and toxicity indicating that dosimetry based personalized treatment would improve outcome and increase survival there is a study published in european journal of nuclear medicine and molecular imaging published in 2018 which studies about different methodology and uh, dosimetry in prrt with the title dosimetry methods and clinical applications in peptide receptor radionuclide therapy for neuroendocrine tumors in which they have studied 288 original articles and tried to find methods and the comment to present an overview on clinical aspects of dosimetry in prrt for net and they concluded clinical dosimetry in prrt is feasible and can result in improved treatment outcomes so most of the papers saying there's a strong evidence that personalized dosimetry treatment plans will improve outcome and increase survival there's a book on nuclear medicine dosimetry published in 2017 the practice of internal dosimetry in nuclear medicine which is written by michael g stavin he has experience of more than 30 years in dosimetry of nuclear medicine he has published several papers, written so many books, made softwares like Meadows and Olinda, made several phantoms, etc. And in the book, there is a chapter called The Need for Patient Individualized Dosimetry in Therapy. He says, as per regulatory requirement, radiation doses are measured for radiation workers, CT scan patients, radiotherapy or brachytherapy patients, and even for airline pilots and flight attendants. But only people on the earth for whom radiation dose is not calculated is nuclear medicine patients. These patients, many of them are children and are treated with fixed dosing techniques. No retrospective dosimetry is performed and years later if we need to know how much dose they received for cancer epidemiology or further therapies, we have absolutely no idea of what radiation doses they may have received. He keep on saying and says patient individualized medicine is a current area of growth and tailoring patients treatment is our basic duty towards patients and make sure they receive standard medical care in the same book he has summarized the typical arguments for not doing dosimetry let's see one by one the argument number one performing such calculations is difficult and expensive requiring too much of efforts three to five planner and spec city or PET CT image is needed to provide patient individualized dosimetry plan for nuclear medicine therapy whereas a single CT study suffices for external beam therapy. Next is the cost. This varies between 200 euros to 5500 euros depending upon the estimation method used and as the cost increases the accuracy of dosimetry planning will also increase like if a single regression analysis and estimation of only whole body dose is done it takes perhaps half a day and cost around 200 euros per patient if performing organ based dose calculation with three to five planar scans and outlining of regions of interest regression analysis of individual organ curves and calculations of mean organ dose using dosimetry codes takes perhaps one day of phases time and a cost around 1600 euros per patient if it is being done with the state of the art individualized dosimetry with 3D dose characterization using 3 to 5 SPECT scans, image registration, Monte Carlo analysis, and characterization of dose distribution, dose volume histogram, if these all are being done, this may take up to 3 days of intensive analysis with an approximate cost of 5500 euros. To justify this argument, he says like this. These cancer patients who have been to difficult and invasive procedures, possibly surgeries, chemotherapy, etc., will certainly consent on lying on an imaging table for a few times to evaluate their biodistribution and biokinetics. We are tailoring all other kinds of medical procedures to individual patients to optimize each subject's treatment. We should certainly do this for therapy with high doses of radiation. Regarding the cost, he says, in treatment planning of IMRT takes around 5500 euros per patient. So if that can be done, why not this? The argument number two, no standardized methods exist for performing individual dose calculations. And methods vary significantly among different situations. 
and the justification they have written two MID publications pamphlet number 16 and 23 this provides clear method to obtain tissue and tumor uptake from anterior and posterior planar images or tomographic images the number and spacing of time points is clearly explained means method is explained clearly it is given as a guideline there are different softwares which includes the Olinda well established standard model for reference adults, children and pregnant women and have been widely employed in international nuclear medicine community. The doses from this used in drug approval processes for university approvals, ethical committee approvals for evaluating research proposals. So if this can be used worldwide for research and drug approval processes, why it cannot be used for regular nuclear medicine therapy planning? In the argument number three, the dose calculations made to date have had poor success in predicting tissue response. And the justification is many studies failed to find firm correlation between tumor dose and observed response. There are several studies which has found convincing relationship and showed that tumor radiation dose was clearly linked with likelihood of subjects to obtain a complete response to therapy. The use of these standardized procedures in the patients has allowed development of reproducible results but in some cases results are not correlated with observed effects. Let's see what our governing councils are saying on dosimetry. There is a publication of European Union Council Directive 2013 Euratom of 5 December. This says about the optimization. Article number 56. For all medical exposures of patients for radiotherapeutic purposes Exposures of target volume shall be individually planned and their delivery appropriately verified taking into the account that doses to non-target volumes and tissues shall be as low as reasonably achievable and consistent with the intended radiotherapeutic purpose of the exposure. In the definitions of article 4, they have clarified that radiotherapeutic means pertaining to radiotherapy including nuclear medicine for therapeutic purposes. So this statement clearly says the nuclear medicine treatments cannot be considered different from external beam radiotherapy. Should be planned and verified individually through dosimetry of target and non-target volumes and should be optimized and delivered with reasonably low doses but not so low. So we have no escape and we need to plan the doses individually and verify them. They started publishing standard operating procedures. First publication came in 2008 which says the standard operating procedure for pre-therapeutic dosimetry. The part 2 of this SOP came in 2013 and in 2018 they have written about the uncertainties or the chances of error in the absorb those calculations select so this is the 2018 paper this is of 2013 paper and this is of 2008 paper published in European Journal of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging so the conclusion is high quality individualized treatment planning can be provided for each patient if center will not do this voluntarily the appropriate comment agencies will make it mandatory and if comment will not make it act Patients and patient advocacy group may force the issue. So it is the time to end traditional approach of all patients being treated with fixed dosing approach that ignores their individual characteristics and deny them with the high quality of therapy. The aim of this video tutorial is to know everything about the nuclear medicine dosimetry so that we all can work together and do something collectively so that our patients do not get a substandard care. The larger aim of this presentation is patients of nuclear medicine therapies to get tailor-made radiation doses. We as a nuclear medicine professionals own dosimetry and should be able to perform it in practicing nuclear medicine. And it is not only limited for the research purpose or not for the ICRP or MIID or radar group people. In the next video, we will be discussing about basics of nuclear medicine in which we will discuss about all the components of nuclear medicine dosimetry which are required to be understood so we are going to have very exciting sessions ahead stay connected if you wanted to download 
PDF form of this presentation. You can visit nuclear medicine solutions dot in. All the updates and PDF version of these presentations will be uploaded on nuclear medicine physicist page. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to write us at support at the rate of nuclear medicine solutions dot in for any query or feedback, and also suggest other topics to be addressed of your choice. Thank you very much.